good evening everyone and uh, i heartily welcome uh, dr arun uh, for this wonderful session which uh, which is on importance of creativity and innovation in teaching and learning along with the new education policy 2020 and uh, we welcome you sir sir you Thank have you. vast experience in bioscience especially in the neuroscience and molecular uh, cellular biology and uh, Sir is uh, a well-known uh, speaker for uh, various uh, international as well as national conferences. Sir uh, is currently is a part of uh, Dialbag Education Institute, Agra. Sir has uh, many uh, important talks. Uh, he has also uh, delivered two TEDx talks. Scientific excuse the scientific experts panelists to national TV channels. Like Aaj Tak, India TV, Lok Sabha TV, TV9, uh, Bharat Vaj, ABP, CS TV, and many more. Sir is uh, the panelist uh, for the scientific uh, science radio talks on All India Radio, Prasar Bharati. Uh, he is the writer of popular popular science article in magazines and newspaper like Times of India. Resource person for UGC, HRDC. Uh, centers of central uh, university including jnu and uh, many more in new delhi and uh, uh, what i really liked uh, about his one sentence that he is still learning how to learn anything which uh, which okay. helps to develop the multi talented man which because of that he is uh, developing himself as a multi talented uh, talented mentor strategic thinker and in, uh, he is intellectual with the ability to see things beyond ordinary sir we welcome you for this session and uh, everyone is eagerly waiting you for uh, uh, giving your uh, thank you so much uh, from our okay. uh, national college dr neha jatiyani as well as uh, mr hidinesh masangani our vice principal and uh, sir we welcome you here thank you so much for uh, accepting our uh, invitation uh, so okay. please uh, you can start your talks thank you so much okay okay thank you dr mona for a wonderful introduction uh, and and i'm also thankful to national college bandra the principal dinesh sir and and you all of you and and especially the students fraternity to whom i'm so much loved as assistant professor myself so i welcome you all to join with me and uh, i'd like to add upon that i had my phd from mumbai national institute for research and reproductive health so i had been to national college also several times when i was in mumbai so i have my you know my nostalgic you know feeling for the national college so the topic which i decided with dr mona to have with you is importance of creativity and innovation in teaching and learning like like it is the both way teacher jo education deta hai and student jo leta hai along with the new education policy jo 29 july ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी को डिक्लेयर हुआ था कंट्री में न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी सो आई एम एन आई एम बेसिकली अ न्यूरो बायोलॉजिस्ट आई हेड माई थ्री पोस्ट डॉक्टरेट टू स्पेशली फ्रॉम अब्रॉड फ्रॉम डेनमार्क इन कॉर्नल यूनिवर्सिटी सो आई एम आई एम बेसिकली अ ब्रेन रिसर्चर सो आई बींग अ कॉग्नेटिव साइंटिस्ट आई एम वर्किंग लाइक ऑन सेवरल फेसिट्स ऑफ मेमोरी एंड ड्रीम्स एंड यू नो ब्रेन बायोलॉजी traumatic brain injury and like that those are like topics of my phd students but this topic i want to add a point between new education policy and the creativity and innovation which is the ultimate need now especially in the post covid era so uh, so the importance of education is being known already from very sources since a childhood like a man without education is like building without a foundation so this shows how necessary is the education in today's world maybe uh, some decades or centuries back education uh, you know formal education was less pertinent than the you know the the education we get from the parents but in today's world uh, the formal education is also important and without it like many things cannot be done i have several you know beautiful quotes and be- from various dignitaries uh, that we have read time to time about the education or importance of education like mahatma gandhi says by education i mean all round drawing of the past in child and man in body mind and spirit apj kalam sahab said some of the brightest minds in the country can be found in the 
last ventures. So it shows that uh, we do not know at what time we become, you know, a uh, glittering star. And, and not always the toppers are always, you know, top in their life. So there's even several other codes of education. So uh, I will be covering in my presentation uh, new education policy related uh, some facts like meanings of education, need for education, for nation building for today, then basic and higher education scenario, salient features. Then I will start having my talk on creativity and innovation then brain biology of creativity innovation, then its meaning in the aspect of a student and in the aspect of a teacher, and then examination system in higher education. So national policy on education and PE is formulated by the government of India for promotion of the education among the people of India. And first uh, education policy was, uh, was uh, you know, released by, uh, Indira Gandhi 1968, second by Mr. Rajiv Gandhi in 1986, and there was a modified version by even Singer Rao in 1992. And third NP comes on recently uh, during this uh, when COVID was on full fledged mood on 29 July 2020 by present government. Uh, so, uh, also, I should not forget the you know contribution by a uh, former uh, prime minister of india dr manmohan singh ji uh, on 4th uh, august 2009 co right of children to free and compulsory education act parliament ke through uh, and that gives you know mandatory for uh, giving education for the age of 6 to 14 years and ye aaj bhi jari hai sarv shiksha abhiyan and so uh, about this new education policy after this uh, new government in 2014, TSR Subramaniam, a very senior bureaucrat, IS officer, was given the task to draft a new education policy in, 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 in 2015. But he gave his reports by 2016 also, but somehow this education policy was not accepted. And then he also passed away <coughs> due to ill health in 2018. Then K. Kasturi Rangan, ISRO uh, chairman, former ISRO chairman, was given a task to redraft this education policy. And then there were several, uh, you know, I think nine, ten uh, senior uh, professors, vice chancellors, part of this new education policy. And the f draft was uh, released, this education policy, into 2019. And this year we accepted it. So what is education? Education is what remains after one has forgotten everything he learned in the school that Albert Einstein said. It means, and, and if you go to dictionary, then education definitions are, you know, uh, various kinds of definitions are there. So education is preparing a person to face everyday life that you understand now. Okay, so, so what are the principles of a new education policy? So it's its purpose, uh, the purpose of education system is to develop good human beings capable of rational thought and action, possessing compassion and empathy, courage and resilience, scientific temper and creative imagination with sound ethical moorings and values. So this education is to bring uh, or create equitable, inclusive and plural society envisioned by the constitution. So it is must, it is the right of everyone to have the education. So the, the so as per new education policy, uh, presently like almost 100% enrollment is there for class one to five, fifth. But still, if you go from class six onwards, there's a, there's a sharp decline at every stage uh, number of enrollment. Like PhDs are even less than 1%. So there's a plan that graduation should be up to 50% should be graduate by, by next d decades or so. So as a need of an increase in the gross enrollment is needed, this is, uh, this data is from the December 2011, when India was having only 17.27% uh, gross enrollment and, and see the comparative values of other countries, they are far ahead. But still we are uh, in the developing country. So number of universities, when India was 
uh, got independence in 1947. That time, only 20 universities were there in India, and there were only 496 colleges, and less than 0.2 million students used to be there. But in now, in 70 years, we have almost 1,000 universities right now. Uh, they are public universities, private, deemed, and state universities, etc. It's now even more than 1,000 now. But now there shall be not more than 10 colleges in the one universities. However, even till today, one universities is still having more than 1,000 colleges. You know, so it's so hazard. Now, school education, which was previously in this way, now they made it to basic education, foundational, preparatory, middle, and secondary. So there will be different format now for this uh, pre-education, and the school education will be designed in a five plus three plus three plus four design. If there will be holistic development of the learners, that is envisioned by this new education policy. Curriculum will be reduced down. They will be focused on experiential learning. Means uh, your uh, experiential learning means for skill and development, whatever necessary. It it should be having less factual information and more experiential or practical language, and there will be no hard separation among curricular, extracurricular, and co-curricular activities. It is envisioned. I mean, how we have to take this new education policy. Now, uh, now there will be curricular and co-curricular outcomes. So the government and this new education policy envision that there will be spiritual growth of the students. Communication power will be stronger. Critical thinking, critical thinking, uh, will be more, you know, important to inculcate in the students. Integration of knowledge, intercultural engagement, leadership, professional preparedness, and self-sufficiency. So, self-sufficiency is like acquire life management skills that help you adapt and achieve in a rapidly changing world. It is very much necessary. And government of India keep emphasizing that we should have our skills now related to uh, you know manage uh, not only getting a job, someone rather you should create a job. We have to make students like this. So national curriculum framework of school education will be set up. Teacher eligibility test will be strengthened to inculcate better test material. Continuous professional development of teachers will be on priority. Like teachers should get upgraded time to time, and there will be a common guiding set of national professional standards for teachers will be developed. I mean, there are several, uh, you know, objectives that that are to be defined. Now, coming to see uh, so far in the school education, also we we are more focused on curricular activities like homework, denika, teacher who padhaega jo se books mein, and then tuition hum padhte hain. क्योंकि बच्चे ट्यूशन क्लासेस में नहीं अगर पढ़ पाते बट नाउ दे विल बी मोर फोकस ऑन को क्यूरिकुलर एंड एक्स्ट्रा क्यूरिकुलर एंड मिसलेनियस एक्टिविटीज को क्यूरिकुलर लाइक मेंटल हेल्थ रूबिक क्यूब गेम्स एक्सेट्रा एक्स्ट्रा क्यूरिकुलर लाइक स्पोर्ट्स डांस म्यूजिक आर्ट स्काउट्स एंड गाइड एंड मिसलेनियस लाइक हॉबीज डेवलपिंग हॉबीज टी वी सो दे विल बी होलिस्टिक डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द लर्नर्स और द स्टूडेंट्स by this new education policy it is being envisioned or imagined and we have to work upon getting this now as we are in a higher education myself a university professor in new to in a higher education institute so higher education plays an extremely important role in promoting human as well as societal well-being and in as per the indian scenario there is a need of democratic socially conscious cultured and human Nation upholding liberty, equality, fraternity, and justice for all. This we envision because after this education, everyone are the stakeholder of this uh, nation building. So, like one thirty-five crore people, we all are like one brick each to make our nation. Okay. Uh, so, higher education significantly contributes towards sustainable livelihoods and economic development of the nation. And So there are two ways. One way is the universities or colleges where the education is given. Other way is the regulatory framework of higher education. Now, regulatory framework of higher education in India is is three prong system like policy making, then regulation, and then accreditation. So you understand like policy making like UGC regulations are the guides under which you know 
a university's function and accreditation like by NAC or so that gives uh, you know numbering or, or some some values to each college and university so that one can understand its reputation and the output. So the, what are the major problems in the higher education system right now? So there are fragmented higher education ecosystem in the country right now. Like you can see uh, our country is having a, a, a lot of heterogeneity starting from JNK to Tamil Nadu to Gujarat to somewhere Tripura. It's a big, huge country. So less emphasis on the development of cognitive skills and learning outcome. It is being uh, felt that there is less cognitive skills. They are more factual information rather. So that's why it is needed. And change is the necessary in the world for getting upgraded. That's why new, new education policy keep coming. And that is, was the need and, and the now new education policy is being declared. There's a rigid separation of disciplines with early specialization and streaming of students. The easiest example is how, how some years back, uh, uh, parents used to say only two or three options used to be there, like doctor, yeah, engineer, you remember, everywhere in India. But now this, uh, these two uh, words are, now mis are no more, you know, so uh, in vogue, rather they're the ample number of, you know, ideas someone wants to say. Uh, author, space scientist, or, or something else. Uh, so, rigid, uh, sorry, limited access, particularly in socio economically disadvantaged area, it is being found that there are several disadvantages, uh, areas are, are still lacking in the education. Limited teacher and institutional autonomy. Limited teacher means a teacher student ratio. It is very poor, unlike uh, USA or so. And institutional autonomy, even though like some institute want to do something on their own, but there are so strict guidelines by the government they can't do. Inadequate mechanism for merit-based career management and progression of faculty and institutional leaders. Lesser emphasis on research at most universities. This is still till now. I mean, research means only research institutes and universities are uh, having less, uh, you know, output so far. But now, government wishes that universities should also impart a lot of research, a less effective regulatory system, etc. So, NEP is to overhaul and re energizing the higher education. So, moving towards a higher education system consisting of large multidisciplinary universities and colleges, um, it's, it's a mammoth job. Moving towards a more multidisciplinary undergraduate education, revamping of curriculum, pedagogy, and assessment. This is very important. And then reaffirming the integrity of faculty and institutional leadership. And there will be NRF, Foundation of National Research Foundation for funding of the universities. And after this uh, COVID problem, ongoing out uh, COVID pandemic, there will be more online education and open distance learning platform. It is being felt because maybe near future, there will be more uncertainty. So the governments of higher education institute by high qualified in independent votes having academic and administrative autonomy will be done. Light but tight, this kind of you know regulation is needed. And moving towards faculty and institutional autonomy. And now I will be giving some uh, new, new education policy what it will give. So the salient features of higher education system is Growth will be in the both public and private institutions. It will be having more emphasis nowadays. The overall higher education sector will aim to be an integrated higher education system, including professional and vocational education. Now, even there's ministries are working, giving vocational courses. We work, bachelor of vocation, you might have heard at several places since last three, four years, vocational courses have come up and, and students are going less towards this, you know, conventional courses, okay? And uh, so the culmination of professional vocational education, how we can achieve, how we can have, you know, every person having a job in his hand or in our hand. So towards a more holistic and multidisciplinary education that we have to make. And uh, there will be flexible curricular structure. There will be multiple entry and multiple exit points. Like now, there will be no emphasis that, that that continuously for three years for graduation, a student has to stay in the same city 
irrespective of uh, his or her parent got transferred from one city to another. So now there will be multiple entry and exit points. One can leave from here, from one college, and then there will be liberty that somebody may continue next year or so in another place. There will be credit-based courses so that you earn like a, like a piggy, piggy, uh, 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 the, the piggy box, and then you, you earn credit and you assemble up, um, add up them, and get a degree. And environmental education will be uh, on priority because there is this thrust that pollution, biological diversity, and forest and wildlife conservation, these things are getting degraded. So there will be emphasis by the government for the environmental education. In So now they will be under graduation for three to four year duration with multiple exit points. So certificate will be given after one year, diploma after two years of study, bachelor degree after three years, or if somebody is going for four years, then multidisciplinary bachelor degree with the research will be given. This is very much fascinating. This used to be there in the Europe uh, when I was there, Academic Bank of Credit, ABC. So they shall be established, which would digitally store the academic credits earned from various recognized higher education institutes so that degrees from an higher education institute can be awarded taking two credits on even other places. So this will be a good thing. So higher education institute will have the flexibility to offer different designs of master's courses. Okay, There will be no MPhil. It will be discontinued uh, by next year or so, slowly, slowly by the universities. It will provide more financial assistance and scholarship increased employability and potential of higher education programs. It will develop brisk courses for students that come from disadvantaged educational background. And it will provide socio-emotional and academic support and mentoring of all such students through suitable counseling and mentoring programs. Okay, so these are the thrust of this new education policy. This is very much promising NRF in this new education policy and based on the output of the research uh, universities will be given different quantum of uh, 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 you know funding for the research okay so this will give like not every university is getting equal amount rather just like it used to be now it should be mer meritocracy based like so if someone is doing good so the university or institute should get more uh, funding. Now, there will be four verticals in this higher education commission. So like UGC is the presently governing this education system through the Ministry of Education, now this will come into the higher education commission, just like election commission. And you, you should be knowing that commission is more powerful like election commission, how it becomes powerful when elections comes. So this higher education commission of India will be having four verticals, National Higher edu Education Regulatory Council that will give regulator. This is the highest regulator body of higher education. National Accreditation Council, NAC will be in place of like NAC, Abhi, National Accreditation Assessment Council, NAC, Nagarvavi Bangalore, my head office is then higher education grants council it will give the funding and general education council now if you think about the governance and regulations presently the university grant commission will transform into the higher education grants council so so like even just yesterday there was a news from uh, new delhi and ugca and EICT will be dissolved by mid of next year and slowly, slowly, this higher education commission will come up into its uh, functional mode. And in the new education policy, private philanthropic initiatives are being encouraged so much. So now all uh, rich billionaires or jitne uh, bhi industrialists in India, they will have their own at least two or three universities so that they can they can they can have their own kind of curriculum specific to their uh, empire or their business uh, modules and then they will take their own students in their uh, jobs or, or in this in their business presently these are the private in institutions and, and rank wise in, as per this one 
uh, uh, survey. These are government and these are private. And here you can see this Nasimonji uh, Institute from your Mumbai also. In government, it's IC, TFR, GNU, etc. And in in future, we can see more public-private partnership. So uh, they will be uh, having more incorporation of the private organization for higher education. Although the basic education will be taken by the government on priority. So what will be the old versus new in the new education policy? So if you take one example of UGC right now, is a chairman, vice chairman and 10 members. But in higher education uh, commission of India, there will be one chairperson and 12 members. And retirement will be age 70, not 65 years. So that, that higher education commissioner will be more powerful and having giving more autonomy and more power. And then there will be a lot of difference. So. Uh, it seems that a new education policy has more positive than the negatives. How it is only after the execution by the bureaucracy. This is my, uh, you know, NB or Nota Bene that gives little bit doubt to everyone because bureaucracy, how it will be executed. Let's see, we have to wait for this. Let the people will finally be able to judge its effectiveness. So what are the challenges to implement NEP right now? Deframing the course curriculum is a big problem. What will happen to UGC, AICT, and NCRT? So they will be dissolved, and probably the same staff will be taken care by this higher education commission. Why? What time? Uh, you know, the six percent GDP over education will be, uh, you know, given by the government. This is not yet uh, uh, given promise, but they say by ten years or so it will take. Then skill and vocational education class six is start but it's too early because in the very rural areas class six may be even chair niota technically class six properly and then how we can start giving this skill and vocational education along with theory uh, classes or so recruitment of good teacher and ratio of teachers it is also one of the question how we have to cover this like that you know there's some uh, 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 this question that we have to address. So what is the creativity and innovation? Now, if you read uh, that new education policy, there, there, this creativity and innovation is given very much, you know, priority. And that was the uh, food for thought for me that how and why this creativity and innovation is giving so emphasis in this new education policy. So what we have to do and what is creativity and innovation? So as per the definition, the creativity is the act of turning new and imaginative ideas into the reality. New and imaginative. Invention. Invention is the creation, like this one. You create something, you create mobile phone or, or anything. New idea or concept. Innovation. It is the process of turning a new concept into commercial success. And you become like a mouthpiece and and just like vaccine development of today, it could be, you know, space science, how how ISRO and NASA are doing good. Even just recently, China has been so successful to have a soft landing of its own satellite on the moon. And they have uh, uh, put their red flag on the moon. So this all is innovation. So these three things, uh, what is this? So what are the type of innovations? So let me have this, like technological innovations, like electricity, the internet, semiconductors. These are technological innovations, product innovation, like car, aeroplanes, iPad, mobile phone. Similarly, process innovation, like assembly line or Kaizen. It's a, Kaizen is a, a Japanese term, like improved by, by modifications or time to time, getting upgraded, financial innovation, cultural innovations, legal innovations, ecosystem innovations like that, okay? And uh, you will be happy to know about this 10 inventions of man, humankind so far. A printing press, light world, aeroplane, personal computer, and vaccines also. And remember, since last, uh, this uh, around 10 months, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, now everyone is renting this, you know, mantra of vaccine that when the vaccine will come and their tv debates 
uh, even I have participated in several debates on the TV about the vaccine. And vaccine has, you know, uh, given um, so great impetus on the human medical health scenario. And now this COVID vaccine we all are waiting. Automobile, clock, telephone, these are the top inventions. So what is creativity? It is defined as the tendency to generate or recognize ideas or alternatives or possibilities that may be useful in solving any problem, communicating with others and entertaining ourselves and others. This is the creativity. The traits of creativity like open to new ideas, little tolerance for boredom, the self-actualizer, independent and anti-authoritarian, these are the traits. And main characteristics of creative people, you might have uh, felt this, they're risk taker. So there's always, you know, there, there should be no hesitation to we, all of us to have a calculated risk at every moment of our life. I'm not taking too much risk that you fell down from a mountain or so and become a Spider-Man or guy. But there should be calculated risk. It is very much necessary. We should dare to fail attitude. I mean, we should dare. We should be more daring. And there should be divergent thinking and ideas. So, convergent ideas are those more religious and rhetoric and old-fashioned. But one should have a divergent ideas. Thinks out of the box different than others you should have a, a you know have it to to sh show yourself different than the others and one step ahead than the rest this i keep you know in my in my notebook or so you know that i should or one should be one step ahead than the rest around you and mean characters creative people are impulsive fickle minded and change uh, their mind quickly sorry this spell mistake i mean these are the I'm not saying these uh, are compulsory and, you know, uh, obligatory, uh, you know, characteristics, but mainly creative people are like that. And I got this article very interesting, Race Differences in the Intelligence, Creativity and Creative Achievement. This article says that Northeast Asian, Northeast Asian is towards this uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, etc. We are in the South, uh, South Asia. And European Caucasoids, European like especially Netherlands, uh, Germany, Switzerland, etc. They have the highest intelligence or IQ or, or in the, uh, on the earth and the greatest creative achievements while other races have lower IQ and less a creative achievement. There is a however an anomaly that Northeast Asians like Singaporean have a higher IQ than the European, but their creative achievements have been less. Now you see this example here. Now see this, uh, if you see this IQ, world ranking of IQ, uh, on an average by a country-wise level, Singapore has highest IQ of 108 per person. There, there, there are exceptions everywhere, like somebody could be fool also in Singapore, but, but it's less probably. And Hong Kong 108, Taiwan 106, South Korea 106, Japan 105 and China 104. Then it starts Europe, Switzerland, Netherlands, North Korea. Okay, India has 81, uh, 81 on an average IQ. But if you see uh, the innovations wise or inventions or materialistic or physical discoveries like computer, etc., they are more from, you know, Europe. They're more from Europe, uh, Finland, Belgium, Germany, now US also, okay? Uh, remember, Europe was more sharper and more brainy or more uh, productive before USA. USA has gone like maybe seven, eight decades or so now highest. Uh, so highest IQ is 108 in Singapore and for India it is only 81. And that also one report said that Finland, uh, it's a small country, ranks first in the world ahead of the USA as the world's most technologically advanced country. It is true, it's most technologically advanced country, Finland. And so now, uh, after having my experience in the brain science and also a teacher, a university professor of neurobiology to the cognitive sciences courses. So what is the brain science of creativity and innovation? Now you might have come across that what is creativity and innovation, how it is necessary for for the mankind okay 
so so it is it is true that creativity and innovation and imaginative ideas comes from your brain okay it is not coming from your uh, bones or blood or something that it's already known so what is how how the human brain look like this is the front of the brain this is the back of the brain this is cerebellum and this is the cerebrum largest part this is the actual human brain uh, taken from a, a autopsy of a recently uh, de- a died person of cancer patient and you can see these are the cerebral uh, arteries i mean it's giving very rich blood circulation because human brain needs very th- uh, very very rich or you know it's a very greedy organ and human brain is like 1.4 kg and it may come in both of your palms together like this it's very uh, lightweight uh, i mean density wise and this human brain is the only organ in the world in, in over the earth that can contemplate its own meanings like human brain can think about its own like other organ they cannot think about their own but human brain can think about own like whatever i'm thinking i'm thinking through my brain so and this is divided into two parts left and right hemisphere and then most of the things are the contralateral like left part of the brain controlling the right part of the body and and vice versa and uh, in the consistency of human brain is like tofu it's it's very soft if you if you squeeze it it will be squeezed very easily it's it's very like a paneer and uh, and if you see this anatomical part of the human brain this is the frontal lobe somewhere here on the front and then parietal occipital is the smallest while frontal is the largest and temporal lobe is over the your ear and cerebellum is separate part it's called little brain in in latin and then it is divided into the several gyri and sulci that keeps you know uh, you know raises kind of thing gyri and sulci and uh, so there are four lobes frontal lobe parietal now frontal is very much important for this uh, creativity in innovation and you know your voluntary motion frontal is the most see every part of the brain is you know in to mingle with the neural circuitry i mean there are a lot of neurons roaming around from here to there and sending their electrochemical signal from this part to that part and they get refined they get become fine tuned and they work in 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 tandem one after one okay even oxy uh, even the cerebellum but from where this originality comes of of your ideas so it is more on the frontal lobe so cerebrum lobes have been mapped now human brain project or uh, uh, there's a brain mapping there are several uh, you know very promising projects are ongoing in US and Europe and and several labs in India also participating in it they want to elucidate this neural circuitry of the brain how how someone starts having thoughts and now one more thing this i'm talking about human brain which is a tangible product tangible mass which is having neurons and glial cells blood and cerebral spinal fluid and beyond that there is a software kind of thing that is called mind mind resides in the brain somewhere a healthy brain is very much necessary for a healthy mind and opposite is wrong like a healthy mind cannot live in a unhealthy brain so until unless you are not having a healthy brain your mind cannot be mind is like a software that are emotions feelings and mind cannot be um, seen through the any neuroimaging technique like fmri ct pet scan or eeg or anything okay mind is studied by you know behavioral aspect but brain can be seen inside by some available neuroimaging techniques especially fmri is the latest and more important technique presently to study the brain so now the in the cerebral cortex cerebrum is uh, c- uh, cerebral cortex is the upper part where the gyri and sulci are there 
this is there's area superior frontal gyrus similarly middle and inferior the superior frontal gyrus is most important it is more primarily associated with the creativity and innovation so if a person is having suppose a traumatic brain injury tbi or there's any heart or there's a, a, a there's a suppose a ischemia or a stroke in the frontal lobe then certainly a person cannot be more cognitive and and certainly he will be deprived of creativity and innovation in his ideas thoughts behavior etc so frontal lobe is having more uh, uh, you know motor areas so whatever we are doing motor function of the finger our digits dancing steps or walking steps this all starts uh, from the frontal lobe and it is the largest part and this also controls your hands and face and face facial muscles are very much necessary for your speech also remember your your emotions also you can show yourself as angry or or smiley face by these all face motions and there's a contralateral effect like as i told you left frontal lobe will control most of the part of the right side of the body and vice versa creativity also means about spontaneous thinking obviously spontaneous thinking that's why thinking is very much necessary thinking and imagination is a very necessary to become a creative that's why many people who keep thinking and and you know like having out of the box mind they only can do something invention so first one should have an idea idea should come up and they are mind wandering bo come ko the rehte hain day dreaming and imagining i mean imagination is very much necessary so frontal lobe is also having broca's area it is somewhere here broca's area is related to the speech formation like uh, like how i am speak speak uh, speaking to you uh, by making my uh, ideas and words and my vocabulary and whatever i've learned and so far in, in my in my life okay and prefrontal cortex of frontal lobe is also necessary for the social behavior now there's a word social neuroscience social neuroscience like how we behave in a society like how how we know that we have to love someone or hate someone or we have to behave in a like we are in a family or in a university how we feel emotions you know this social neuroscience is aspect being studied for even human evolutionary aspect also like other animals they have less social neuroscience than human humans are more but uh, but contrary to it they are, they are also terrorists in the world okay their social neuroscience is in a different mode okay they do uh, i mean ex- something extraordinary also i mean they are on a different path so creativity and innovation could be constructive also for humanity it could be destructive also but for you and we all of us the necessary is it should have a constructive side it should have some ethical and moral consideration i mean it should not be some unethical you could be uh, like somebody making a a, a, a weapon mass destruction now he or she is a, like a scientist or creative person what but but ethical consideration wise it it's not so proper so these are the 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 major functions of the brain parts and you can see this frontal lobe of human brain is having association with the movement of the body how you with the step it is related to the problem solving like mathematics or or any calculation or any analytical problem it's related to your concentrating behavior thinking behavior personality mood even broca centers related to speech control and and you know whatsoever you you imagine or behave or your ideas it's mostly related to the frontal lobe similarly occipital is related to your vision or perception or visual memories like how i recognize uh, einstein's photo oh this is einstein or or it's darwin or something okay parietal is more related to the somatosensory i mean your touch senses thermosensor thand lagna cool hona ye sab bc se cerebellum is related to the posture and balance of the body so the frontal lobe is more important for problem solving movement and social interaction 
So emotional control center and home to personality and decision making ability is related to the frontal lobe. It is related to the planning ahead, like futuristic sochna, how we become futuristic or think so extraordinary. It is monitoring, sustained attention, goal oriented, uh, directed behavior, working memory and problem solving. So frontal lobe and creativity are, you know, very much interrelated. It is the frontal lobe indeed in the brain that is related to the creativity and then creativity leads to innovation. It handles memory. Okay, memory, uh, what, so memory is in several forms. It could be iconic memory, like Im by string image. It could be equic memory, like you listen to someone's voice and you recognize for forever that whose voice is this. It could be haptic memory, like someone's hand touch or kiss or, or cuddling something. Now everything goes through the hippocampus and and then it, it gets, you know, consolidated and indexing in in the brain network of your brain somewhere. So frontal lobe being the largest part of the brain lobe is having, you know, memory, uh, uh, memory lies in the synapse in the frontal lobes also. So creativity happens at intersection of learning and emotion. Until unless you're not emotional in any situation, you cannot have a better learning. That's why when you are learning something, you should put your emotions into it. Size and function of areas of the brain change depending on the use and exposure of various elements. Development of creative capacity also correlates with the development of other capacities, such as languages, become a polyglot or so. So now in aspect of students, how you can, how we can put the innovation and creativity in the students, how we can imagine that they are more creative so get into the flow have new experiences read books it is very much necessary books uh, have it is very good uh, every big one should finish at least one book spend time in nature you should learn from the nature you should have aesthetic uh, you know uh, aesthetic uh, uh, feelings and uh, beauty you should appreciate aesthetic beauty learn through collaboration I mean, वो जमाना चला गया जब solitary अकेले पढ़ के चलता था लेकिन अभी collaboration means you talk your classmates but during COVID time this aspect is has come down very rapidly. Now for several months we were inside their home we were hardly interacting from the world except uh, except this virtual mode. Do something you love. ये three idiots movies का है ये चीज like whatever you like so you so you do the same thing okay find inspiration from others like read uh, steve jobs or 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 you know tesla chairman right now or kalam sahab vivekananda i can say and there's several others you know get inspiration from others set the right mood use the six thinking heads technique that i'll show you ask for advice or feedback from others don't be hesitant Use neurovics exercise. Neurovics, just like aerobics, is for the body making or muscle mass increment or becoming uh, khali or or pelvan. And neurovics exercises are for the mind, how we can have a sharp mind. Use of neuroprotective phytomedicines. It is uh, is in the TK or traditional knowledge since ages, like uh, ginger or uh, brahmi or Bacopa manori and the several, you know, uh, even almond. Uh, almond is neuroprotected, so these are good for the mind and and brain. Meditation and yoga, it's it's totally, you know, uh, after this declaration on twenty first June as a international yoga day, meditation and yoga is is also very much tremendously, you know, um, beneficial for the, the brain. These are the six heads technique. Blue head for the process, white head for the facts, red head for the feelings. Okay. Green head is for our creativity. Okay. This is in this psychology given the six heads technique. Yellow head for the benefits and black head for the cautions. So we should develop all these uh, six facts technique. Now, what are the neurobics? So neurobics is a portmanteau word of neuro means brain or neurons. Neurons are part of the structure and function unit of the brain. Are activities or mental cognitive exercises that stimulate the brain, prevent memory loss, improve memory, recall and creativity. So one should use non-dominant 
these are neurovics exercises are nothing but just smart ideas that you one can do at any time like use a non dominant hand when you are eating food so you can use your left hand to eat something when you do some ulta uh, thing like left handed okay right hand use karna that time you are actively doing this all and when we do actively that time our brain is more in the active mode multitasking habit is very much necessary if you can do multiple things listen to anything that sounds foreign i mean one should one should keep learning from the public from uh, youtube or so and then focus focus at least 5 minute a day per day you sit quiet and think and do imaginative thing and master this sense of smell <laughs> smell strong ho hai to acha hai but remember sense of smell ka loss hona is one of the uh, the feature of this covid this is being proven now change your route to home like when you are going this way from road uh, through road a suppose linking road you are using suppose in this college maybe next time one can use another route also so that your active brain is having more you know memory uh, aspect in the brain mirror gaze and try tongue twister i mean different taste lena so there's several neurovic exercises and uh, around 2 years back uh, it was my first tedx ted talk human brain memory and neurovics it's there on the youtube and on the ted website i discuss this what is a human memory and and what are the neurovic exercises that can be used in day to day life especially by the students to become more smarter or, or to become more cognitive and getting you know advantages of your mind okay this is there then so right now we have to go away from the rod based learning system or cramming information or or just uh, getting full with the uh, factual information we should go towards more uh, creativity lateral and critical thinking based uh, you know education system so the two things in, uh, i i i should let you know there's vertical thinking vertical thinking is just uh, just just directly think karna ki oh iska answer aisa hoga jabki lateral thinking and horizontal thinking is extraordinary thinking like uh, like like to think the the other domains or or suppose if i say there are five x in a basket and there are five people and each one take away one one egg then at the last how many egg will be left then the vertical answer say that they will be zero left because there were five egg and five people but if i ask you how many will be left in the basket then you can imagine by lateral thinking that okay it could be that a person take the basket himself with one egg and now this situation is done so lateral thinking or horizontal thinking is extraordinary thinking or one can think that a person will take that egg to home and then egg se wo hen banayega bait karega aur hen se agla egg banayega but anyway it is extraordinarily not uh, you know easy to think about but even in a civil services examination critical thinking lateral thinking is given more priority and If, even you should think about you know alternative options to answer something okay and now they we are expecting self motivated learners so there's a special edits especially from my favorite susan singh rajput that one should learn how to learn new things means you should know the tactic of learn something so that you can learn anything like i'm a biologist still i learn support statistics or mathematics so i should learn the technique so that you can learn anything this kind of thing you should have okay so creativity depends on the formation of ideas and uh, ideas when put into action become novel ideas i mean so what you think about analytical open mindedness problem solving organizational building and communication skills this all should be strong to become you know uh, extraordinary so i also should not forget this limbic system in the brain system means it is having more than one organ so hippocampus olfactory valve 
septum, fornix, or mitilla. These are some 10 organs. It is somewhere in the mid of the brain, inside the uh, limbic system. It is related to the motivation, motivation and uh, uh, emotions. And as I told you, remember anything, if you want to become creative and innovation, you should have your emotions into it. Like, you can make someone who can make someone who can be involved in it, you can make emotions now. And emotions ko control the limbic system. Okay? So it is related to that, uh, you know, your emotions. And emotions are necessary. Now, creativity and innovation should also be with the teachers, we all of us. Until unless teachers are not having creativity and innovation in his own words, then how they can make students be more creative and innovation? So teachers should should play a role. Uh, uh, I mean, they should be they should play the role as a role model. I mean, they sh they should have some some substance into it. Then only students will feel good. They should use ICT or information communication technology or blended education like computer, video, audio, and you know uh, gadgets or some uh, mind games, etc. Storytelling habit होना चाहिए teacher में field trips, industrial trips and monuments, Jews in sub trip so that you can give, uh, you know, actual situation rather than the book is information, motivate for the games, mind mapping and concept mapping with the students. I mean, it is very much necessary. There are some uh, Android software now mind mapping and there are some psychologist programs are also there. They can tell you that your child or some student X or Y is more prone to become an author, writer, or doctor or something. Be simple and maintain a dialogue to realize their potential. Teacher ke liye ye, unne dialogues baat karte rena chahiye. Strong communication capability for oneself and students. And once you try to have two things now, polyglot and polymath. Polyglot is a situation when you know more than one language, Hindi, English, a Marathi, or, or if you are able to have French, German, Japanese, Chinese or something, you know, foreign language, then you have more chances. And polymath. Polymath, a person who is master of many things, like like he's author, writer, speaker, a professor also, like that. So one should have the, you know, thrust or hunger to become all these two things. Attend the ideas of the students, writing, writing habit, Hotunachi. Nowadays, I'm seeing, you know, writing habit is going by the more use of this mobile phone and education. We hardly write something in a notebook, rather we keep reminder. And this way we are offloading human brain memory over the internet. And this is, you know, not good. This was my second TED talk uh, recently in the February month. How the human memory by not writing down something is getting offloaded over the internet. Internet is a vast knowledge. And that time, simple, simple things we keep forgetting. Because we think, okay, we Google and we ask Google and we ask Google ko hai, or Siri ko hai, ki who is the president of Portugal. But you don't remember. If you write it in your notebook, then, then for years and years it will be in your mind. But when you do everything, uh, you know, so we remain in a more uh, short term memory, long term memory formation. Nahi hota hai. So writing habit hona chahiye, okay? And uh, this is the pyramid of learning. Uh, see, lecture ka hum only little part students ko de paate hain. Reading, audio visuals are 20%, demonstration, discussion, practice doing, and teach others. Jitna jada hai discussion, practice karenge, utna jada information ko uh, learn kara sakte hain student mein. Just lecture dena is not enough. That's why teach others. That's why group discussion should be there in the class like students should be asked one, one 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 after one and after a topic is being taught by a teacher then teacher should give okay uh, student x should now explain what did i say like that so teacher thus will give you know just proper cementing and consolidation of the memory and let's understand the method of learning how to learn anything if you know the art of learn then you can learn anything okay there will be continuous examination system in the students jo year wise tha wo ab continuous hona chahiye every month or so we should keep evaluating and group discussion in the class a teacher should inculcate creative mind also teacher ke liye zarurat hai collaborative hona chahiye wo courageous hona chahiye curious 
connected, compassionate and committed. These are something which are very much necessary to become a good teacher. Uh, I'm also a budding teacher, uh, being in a university, I try to inculcate in my own. So need of reforms in examination system, now they will be de-emphasized on the memorization. But I memorization karne ke hume usse skillful ya ya motorized behavior mein lana chahiye usse usse kaam karana chahiye ki aise karna hai waise karna hai haathon se likh ke dena hai that time we are giving better education improvement in the conduct of examination use of grades in place of marks it's already being started however grades dena make questions with the flavor of design jaise design something invent something or imagine something और और टू गिव अ क्वेश्चन इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सपोज लाइक हम स्टूडेंट को ऐसे क्वेश्चन सपोज दिस इज दिस सो दैट व्हाट विल बी दिस आंसर और क्रिएट अ न्यू एक्सपेरिमेंट लाइक दैट मैक्सिमाइज यूज ऑफ ओपन टाइप क्वेश्चंस बाय बाय द टीचर शुड बी देयर सो वी शुड अवॉइड यूजिंग व्हाट लाइक व्हाट इज माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया इफ आई राइट दिस इज इजी क्वेश्चन समबडी मे स्टार्ट व्हाट माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया वाज इन डिस्कवर्ड बाय दिस दिस माइटोकॉन्ड्रिया इज पावर हाउस but if i say how and why like how mitochondria is being called as a powerhouse so now i i reframe it so the question should be having how and why in our questions feel visit and courage leadership and emphasis over vocational education that is true and i'm great fan of you know dr ap jabdul kalam sahab and a best teacher is a last mistake and this is my last slide also thank you so much and i will be happy to take on any questions from the students or faculty